Check out George's famous baklava. So good, it should be illegal. Oh, wait a second, it is. Instead of sending your friends some lame cookie basket or something they don't want, instead, ship them something they've never had, homemade baklava. Straight from an activist, support the Liberty community. Again, check out George's famous baklava at this website. Hi, this is Taryn Lupo and welcome to Low Country Liberty Report. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a story where a lot of people have asked me to do one, but frankly, I don't know much about it, so I had to do a lot of research. I'm talking about survivalism, and for you guys that have never even heard of that, what that basically means is if there's a disaster of some sort, how to protect yourself and family and come up with a plan. Now, most of my viewers, probably a good majority, know way more about this than I do. So I'm not even going to pretend to be some sort of expert. I'm going to let you chime in in the comments section and hopefully add your two cents to tell me what I missed. But this, I wanted to learn about this topic, but was so blown away when I typed in survivalism. There's like a zillion websites and podcasts, and they're so in-depth that there's not just like a simple beginner, this is what you do 101, that I could find easily. So... Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series where we're going to get prepared together. We're each going to do something every month and be a little more prepared the next month and the next month, and we're going to build on it. So for right now, I'm going to start you with just the very, very basics, what they call the bug out bag. Now, looking at the pictures at Haiti and all the news coming out of there, something like that could hit your area. Uh, it is realistic, and, and we been raised, I mean, most people have never even been without electricity for more than two or three days or, or water or have no idea what it's like when, um, when kind of mass hysteria is going on. If you're watching the films in Haiti, there was a lot of disaster and people helping each other out for three or four days. But once the food and water ran out, people started getting crazy. And um, they finally had to contain them with the military to try to keep order because people, I mean, there were just mobs in the streets of people that didn't have food and water. In medicine and they were getting nuts. As we found out from Katrina, if you trust the government to take care of you during this crisis, you're probably going to wind up being a victim. Katrina was one of the worst disasters um, where there was so many needlessly people killed or hurt or raped or you know just horrible things happened to these people because the government took control and didn't know what the hell they were doing. So anyone with some common sense is not going to trust the government to con um, to take care of them during the crisis and you need to really trust yourself and your own way to find your way out of that mess. What we're going to do is talk about a uh, bug out bag which is like a 72 hour bag. What you really need to do is something simple like this. Just start simple. Find somewhere to go if your town's wrecked. It should be pretty close that you can get to within a day if you can. Um, if you, you know, hopefully you have some sort of relatives, but like me, I don't have any relatives around here. What you might have to do is just ask a couple friends or maybe even on Facebook who wants to be my bug out buddy. And, you know, someone that lives maybe an hour or two away would be great or three. And you just have an understanding that if hell goes loose in their town, if they get hit by a tornado, they're going to be in your doorstep with their family and kids the next day and, and vice versa. You're going to try to get to them. That's the most simple way to deal with these kind of situations. I'm not going to go into the darker stuff yet. We're going to go with the basics. Now, what you're going to want is a bag that will give you basically enough supplies for three days to get to where you need to be. You're going to have to realize when all hell breaks loose, people are going to get crazy sometimes. So you want to avoid people the best you can. You want to um, get a map, plan out the most back roads, backwards, least traveled paths you can find to your friend's house, to, to you know, your rally point. You're trying to put this on a piece of paper because you're not going to trust things like smartphones, cell phones, GPSs, anything to really work right when this is going on. Now, hopefully GPS will, but who knows? Just be smart and, and always have a paper backup. Now, these are the things you should have in your, your uh, bug out bag. So we're going to do that and we're going to start real simple with obviously you need water. Everybody in the family needs about a gallon a day, including your pets. Don't forget them because if you leave them, they're as good as dead probably. So consider bringing your pets. Um, that'll be enough probably if you ration it. You're, you only have to go three or four days. You're not planning on living forever off this bag. So, you know, a gallon a day will do it. 
You want some food that's non-perishable. Obviously, the freeze-dyed stuff is great, but it's expensive. If you're like me and a cheap bastard and broke, you probably just want some canned food and a can opener. Um, you're going to want a water purification supplies. If you do run out of water and you end up being longer than three days trying to get where you need to be, you're talking about, um, they have pills that do that, but I really like these filters. They're, they're like uh, water bottles with filters on them. You can pretty much throw in pond water, creek water, and they use it for camping. And by you sucking through the straw, there's actually a carbon filter that'll pull all that junk out and make the water safe to drink. It's really easy and convenient. You want some cooking supplies. You want some, uh, you know, obviously some plates and dishes, but make them light. Try to go with the plastic, something like that, because you're going to have to haul this big bag around. Also, the bag you might want to use, don't get like a huge duffel bag. Get something with wheels. So if you do run out of gas and have to pull this thing, you're not dying. You know, um, go ahead and use a big old suitcase with wheels. You want a first aid kit. Obviously, any medications that you or your pets need. Um, you're going to want a fire starting tool. Something like matches, and uh, obviously I would get a backup lighter. You know, you definitely want this in case it's cold and you need to light a fire or cook. You also um, are going to want some standard camping equipment. Things like uh, if you have a sleeping bag, that would be great. But also waterproof stuff, because if there is a tornado or a hurricane and you're trying to get through this, it's going to be wet and rainy and dirty and you, all your stuff's going to get ruined. So you need ponchos for sure. You know, a battery or I would say like a crank operated flashlight and radio. I prefer one of these things that's a combo. It's very light. Snap-on makes it and it has a crank you can crank up. It has an emergency radio built into it for weather and emergencies and it has a regular radio and you can completely run it off cranking. And they're only like 20 bucks. So I really like this model. Um, it also has a hookup in the back. You can crank power out of it if you need to charge something. Pretty cool. I would also highly recommend you bring firearms. You're going to want to bring enough bullets and, um, you know, a couple clips should be fine. But really, pistols are great because they're easy to carry. But if you have a small shotgun you can fit into the bag, I would bring it as well. Or even a small rifle. People get crazy. Just watch the footage in Haiti. And I hope you never have to use it. But you sure as hell don't want to be, you know, um, attacked by a mob of people because they see you have a supplies and they don't. So make sure you're well armed. You also want to probably bring a crowbar, incredibly useful to get into places that you might need to get into, or cars, or found objects, whatever. It's super useful. And obviously you're going to want to get some sort of cash with you, and depending on the crisis, I would definitely, you know, I'm a big fan of silver and gold, so I would bring something that actually has real value in case, uh, depending on the crisis, but usually cash will get you through. Have some cash stocked in your house. And um, lastly, you always want a knife. Make sure you have a handy knife. Um, I prefer one that folds so it's easy to carry, but you obviously want this. It'll be like one of your best friends when you're camping or preparing things or even for self-defense if you need to. But I like the folding style. They're safer. Those are the basics. You can fit all that in a suitcase pretty easily and it'll take you about an hour or two to put this together. Don't put this off. I mean, use it like insurance. You really should be contacting a friend. Go ahead and put up, you know, on your Facebook. I'm looking for a bug out, bug out buddy. You know, three hours out of Savannah, whatever your deal is. And, and actually get that in place because it's really no excuse. You don't want to be 90% of the masses that have never planned, have no idea what's going on in shock. I mean, realistically, most people are going to stick around their houses for a couple days trying to... Um, hoping that the government comes in and cleans everything up. But if the disaster is bad enough where the town's just leveled, you need to get the hell out as fast as possible before they lock down all the roads and force you into some uh, FEMA camps. So protect yourself and family. We're going to keep going with this series. Feel free to add anything else that I left out of the bug out bag you think might be useful. But remember, you got to drag this thing around so you don't <laughs> want it too big. Also, I would recommend um, keeping extra gas in your storage just in case you need it for your car to get out of town. As always, this is Terry Lupo. Good hunting.